Let's, let's start off with, with one of the more uh, contentious issues that um, Blue Jersey readers are, are concerned about, and that's education. Um, what do you see as the issues facing quality education in New Jersey? Well, affordability. I mean, that is the biggest stumbling block is affordability. And, you know, what we have to do is do things differently than what we're doing. Uh, you know, we started looking around the country at what other states are doing and uh, just finding ways to make it more affordable because education, and I've said it and probably stole someone's quote, is the greatest equalizer ever. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can't deny young people that opportunity. So, you know, we're, we're looking at anything. We're creating a study commission on affordability. One is pay it forward, pay it back. Another uh, situation that we just did in my home county, Gloucester, our county college is now going to be affiliated with Rowan University. You'll go two years, county college rate, get a Rowan College degree. Two years, if you stay at the county college facility and finish your other two years, you'll get a Rowan University degree at 15% discount. Now, other states do that now. Other states have their community colleges as satellites. You know, they brand them as satellites because some people, for whatever reason, have a stigma on county colleges, like they're yeah. not as good. And we know they are. Yeah. They're quality education. So by rebranding and associating with major universities, you bring the cost down, you increase seat capacity, which is another issue, mm -hmm. is seat availability also. So we got a lot of work to do on higher education. Don't we have something similar to that in Burlington County with Drexel and Burlington County College? It's, it's similar, but it's not the same. You, where, you're, where, you're doing, where you're doing degrees, uh, where you're doing the, the degrees on uh, basically from other universities, like we have, all of them have it. This is different. This is a little bit different, to be quite honest with you. Okay. Charter schools are an issue. Um, question about charter schools. Should charter school teachers and administrators be subject to the same qualifications as those in public schools? Well, I think so. Okay. I think they're teaching our children. You know, the most important thing is that our teachers that are, are, that are, our teachers that are teaching our children are, are, are skilled and trained and professional. You know, there's a misnomer in charter schools that charter schools are the end-all to be-all. There are good charter schools and there are bad charter schools. And here in Trenton, a charter school closed after a dozen years. And they had, you know, a group of kids that went through and the school was failing the entire time. So we failed a whole group of children. You know, it's important that you ensure that charter schools are meeting standards that our public schools are, because uh, a lot of people, for some reason, don't, or, or some people, like the governor, uh, attack our public school systems and say they're poor. We have one of the best public school systems in the nation, and we should support it and not tear it down. The, the governor's um, hand-picked superintendent for Camden uh, came in with very limited experience in terms of administration and in terms of classroom teaching, and uh, yet he's receiving a salary above the salary cap that has driven experienced superintendents out of the state. What's, what's your reaction to that? Well, you have to be consistent. If you set a rule, it's got to be the same for everyone. You know, it can't be except for this guy or that guy. you got to be consistent. Okay. Let's move on to um, probably what was the capstone of, of the current session that's that's ending uh, it was S-1, it was marriage equality. Um, there was a bill introduced, it was withdrawn. Um, where are we going with that? Is, this, is the judicial solution enough or are, are there going to be more steps? As legislators, Senator Weinberg and Lesniak and myself actually think we should have legislation, there should be a statute. But in talking to Lambda Legal and, and Garden State Equality and, and the groups that really have been there, uh, with Senator Weinberg, because you know Senator Weinberg was uh, on this issue well before it was popular. You know what I mean? And uh, uh, you know we and think there's you are too. yeah, and I'm and I'm proud of I'm proud of the position I took in that uh, you know we got the 24 votes and we were working on an override. The advocates want to leave it the way it is right now, so I got to respect them, you know, and I'm going to respect them because they're the people that are impacted by it. Uh, but I think the wisdom someday would be to do some legislation. But, you know, you know Steve, we're not going to tell people that fought all these years, you know, uh, no, we're going to tell you what's best for you. Uh, this is what they want. This is what we're going to do. We have to respect our wishes. But, you know, they all really owe a great deal of gratitude to Loretta and Ray because this is, this is not just some cause. 
this was a mission that they worked, worked on and believed in. Moving on to um, what was probably the major news story of the year, and that's the, the recovery from Hurricane Sandy. Um, how do you think it's going? Not well. Not well. You know, uh, and it's easy to criticize. You know, this was a storm of a magnitude that we've never seen, but we, it's going slower than I would like to see it going. Uh, I'd like to see things uh, cleaned up quicker. You know, there's still people without homes. Uh, you know, the, the uh, process of purchasing homes, some areas it's going well, some areas it's not. Uh, I think that, you know, we really need to look at what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong, and, and, and that we need to fix it. You know, look, there was no doubt in my mind this was going to be a multi-year process before we got back to normalcy, but it, uh, we, got, we, we need to do better. There was a report from the Fair Share Housing Center, I think last week, that indicated that minorities are being denied assistance at a higher rate than, uh, than the majority. Uh, what's your reaction to that, and is there a legislative uh, solution to that? Well, that's one of the things that we're looking at right now, Steve, because if that's the case, it's got to be corrected immediately. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and it's concerning. I would hope that's not, you know, I, I got to tell you, I hope that report is not 100 percent accurate because then that's, it's a bad statement for the pe not for the people, but for the state government. It's a very bad, bad thing. Do you plan on holding any hearings on Well, we're recovery? looking at it. We're looking at it, and we're going to be talking to our colleagues. We've had some. Mm -hmm. You know, Senator uh, Smith has held three or four hearings about Sandy and, uh, and uh, in the Environment Committee, so it wouldn't surprise me if we're not going to continue along there until we get everybody back the way they are. Because the, the other thing is, we have to make sure that when these storms that now come every year, it seems, that we're better prepared for. Okay. Today's Thursday. It's Twitter Thursday. Um, do you do your own tw tweets? Yeah. You do? Okay. Yeah. So that's good. And obviously, I don't make people happy with them. Yeah. Well, that's, that was my next question. It seems like the first time around, you, uh, you kind of riled up some of the, uh, the gun advocates. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm disappointed, Steve, because, you know, the, the background bill that we, the background check bill that we did mm -hmm. is really a fair bill mm -hmm. and was respectful to gun owners, but was respectful to people that are not gun owners that want to make sure that mental health ground, mental, mental health background checks are included. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and to ensure people that shouldn't have guns don't get them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? At least in New Jersey, look, bad people, as they say, the gun owners will say, will get guns from other places. We know that. But bad people with mental health issues actually get guns here because we can't check when we have the ability to. So, you know, I'm, I'm really, look, I know I riled them up, but I'm not walking away from that because we really need to have a system. That would have been a national model. That would have went throughout the country. And I know that there's other states looking at what we proposed because it's a simple, fast process to make sure that bad people with mental health issues don't get guns. With, with the governor running for president and trying to appease the, the gun lobby, um, do you think that, that the legislature actually can do anything moving forward? I, look, he vetoed some very uh, common sense bills. In fact, vetoing the 50 caliber, which was what he suggested, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, which he agreed on. And in the 50 caliber bill we did, it was exactly what he asked for, and he vetoed that. Look, the governor, the governor is playing to a national audience. We've known that for two years. Uh, there's going to be much more of that play now that the election's over. But it doesn't mean that we stop trying. You know, it really doesn't mean that we give up on the issue. The issue has to stay alive. So maybe not this governor, but the next governor will do the right things and address it. Okay. Talking about the governor's ambitions, I mean, the Democrats seem to be piling on on this Port Authority fiasco, uh, which I don't think anybody really thinks the governor actually gave the order to, uh, to close those lanes. What's, what's your take on that? And I, I know there are going to be some hearings and maybe some legislation to promote transparency, but where do we go moving forward on that? Well, you know, I, get, this is, I got to tell you, it's, uh, this is another one of uh, Loretta's initiatives, you know, because Loretta jumped out on this early on. And no, no one thinks the governor ordered that. That that that's way beyond what anybody would think happened. 
but we got to make sure this kind of thing can't ever happen again. You know, hearing that uh, we ordered the lanes closed but don't tell anybody, uh, whether it's transparency, uh, more hearings, you know, we'll, we'll be looking to do those. Okay. Um, looking at some of the, the national issues, um, there was a report on Obamacare that says that the state-run exchanges have been more successful in signing up people for feder for the, than the federal ones. Are New Jersey citizens being shortchanged on, on Obamacare? We well, have yeah, because the state ones are running better. But, you know, honestly, that's a problem that the federal government's own exchanges aren't running as well as the state's. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, Steve? It's a federal program. Yeah. So it's more disheartening that the feds can't get their act together. And hopefully they do shortly because we are, whether we like it or not, the governor would not go into a, would not let us set up a state exchange. We tried. Mm -hmm. Again, this is a clear indication where we, as Democrats, stood where he stood. And the people are getting shortchanged now. But for him, it's real easy. Go tell the president to fix it. Yeah. Okay. Another uh, issue that transcends national and, and state uh, borders is, is the DREAM Act. I'm told you're making an announcement today on that. Yeah, we, uh, look, it's not exactly what I wanted. And, and if we had our choice, it would be ex exactly to build so to pass the Senate and the Assembly. But uh, the governor is going to conditionally veto the bill and take out the TAG grant, but he's going to make the bill effective immediately. He's going to sign it today. And for me, I couldn't in good conscience have young people have to pay double tuition over one issue. Look, we'll fight to get that piece, but the fact that we can get him, that I was able to negotiate a situation where he will sign the bill today, December 19th, making it effective immediately, so young people going into the next semester won't have to pay double tuition mm -hmm. is a big thing. There was many things he wanted to do with the bill. Uh, at the end of the day, he took the tuition aid grant money out. We, we don't agree because if we're going to make these young people equals as they should be, you know, they go to school with our kids. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have horns on their heads. They're, they're, they're kids. Mm -hmm. They should be treated all the way around as equals, and we're going to continue to fight to get that last piece. But I just couldn't in good conscience. You know, getting him to sign it and make it effective immediately uh, is a big victory for these young people. In the news this morning, there was an article about four former governors uh, urging the Pinelands Commission to veto the pipeline that's, that's going to go through the Pinelands. Uh, where do you stand on that, and what can the legislature do? Honestly, I just started looking at it, Steve. I was surprised when I read that story. Look, you know, the pipeline is to take a cold fire plant and turn it into natural gas, which is cleaner. You know, and, and honestly, if it's what I'm being told, where it's running along existing roads, I, they'd have, I, I really need to understand why the governors are opposing it. Okay. Um, looking uh, forward to the next session, again, um, there are a couple of Supreme Court nominations that are in limbo. Uh, there were a few this past session that were approved, a few that were not approved. Um, the governor seems to be politicizing the Supreme Court. Um, how can we get some balance on the court? Well, you know, he is politicizing the court. He has been politicizing the court. We're not. And we're going to stand our ground until he recognizes that the balance matters. You know, look, he's entitled to the majority. He really is. That's the way the rules are. He's not entitled to a supermajority. So, the governor has to make a decision on how he wants to move forward because uh, we're not going to move forward until we get the balance that we think the people of the state deserve. Uh, the courts shouldn't be pawns. You know, we have one of the best court systems in the nation. When Alaska and Hawaii were setting up a court system when they became states, they, choose, they chose New Jersey's model. You know, we're surrounded by states that elect their judges. Would you really want to go before a judge that was just at a fundraiser with your opponent? You know what I mean? We got, a good, we got a very good court system. Last question. Um, as I mentioned before, S-1 was the, the keystone uh, piece of legislation, marriage equality, this, this past year. In January, what's, what's going to be S-1? Well, if S-2 of this year's session doesn't get passed, mm -hmm. it'll be S-1 next year. Okay. You, know, you know, the main focus, honestly, is, to me, is higher education affordability increasing more opportunities for young people to stay in the state. It's good for the, for the economy of the state. We lose, you know, the numbers like 35,000 kids to other states. Now, they're not all going to stay here. But if we can 
but a lot of them want to be here, but there's no seats for them. So if we can expand our capacity and keep more young people here, they're our greatest asset. We got, you know, they're, they're, they're the brightest young people that, in the country. So finding opportunities to keep them here and make higher education more affordable so when they graduate from college, they don't have a mortgage payment, mm -hmm. that's, that's one of the main focuses. And honestly, jobs. We have to do a better job. We're way, we're way down on the list in employment. Uh, this governor, it surprises me that people of the state didn't hold him more accountable for his performance on the economy. Uh, but we really need to do a better job. We gave him a bunch of bills last year that he vetoed trying to help the economy. He didn't like them, but he didn't give us any of his ideas back. Senator Sweeney, thank you, and have a Merry Christmas. You too, Steve. Thanks.